All right, guys, so Manor Lords Early Access is almost here, and I'm sure you've been dying for some more gameplay footage and some proper preview impressions from your favorite creators. Well, today, you are getting exactly that. Slavic Magic and publisher Hooded Horse kindly gave me access to the game right after my last video, funny enough, and I have been playing non-stop. In this video, we're going to dive straight into everything you need to know about this early access release, the features and mechanics that are present, what you can expect to actually play when you get your hands on the game, and my overall impressions in my almost three days straight of playing. So let's get started. Manor Lords releases April 26th into Early Access, and what that means is there is plenty here to enjoy. A lot more than the demo in 2022, and more than I expected, to be honest. But there is still plenty of work in progress as well. It's been amazing to get back into the visually stunning landscapes of the game, build up from a small camp to a village, into a large sprawling town with hundreds of people. It was awesome to walk around in third person with my character to mingle, hear the conversations, listen to the thunder and the rain, inspect the various operations, and pretend to go into the market stalls to buy some pelts for trade. It sure is good to be back in the world of Manor Lords. We've got three game modes to choose from, the Rise to Prosperity, which is essentially you taking a region and growing your town to a level 3 settlement without any trouble from bandits or other rival barons and lords. There's Restoring the Peace, which is a longer term game game of growing your town, dealing with the bandit raids, fighting off rival kingdoms, and expanding in the map to claim other territories. And finally, there's On the Edge, which is the most challenging game mode. Constant attacks by bandits and rival barons, and you need to do everything you can to muster a large enough army to defend your settlement. Love the choice and variety of gameplay opportunities here, and I love the customization of difficulty options. You can choose the frequency of bandits bandit attacks, the kind of weather effects, the starting balance of supplies, the fertility of the land, etc. This is all just so important to make the game as replayable, fun, and challenging as possible. Now, I played two campaigns so far, with Rise to Prosperity and Restoring the Peace, both of which are so much fun. Rise to Prosperity naturally is more relaxed, a great time to understand the mechanics, see where the real challenges lie, and just really enjoy the core gameplay loop of Manor Lords, which is the city building. And it does this with glorious success. I love the little tooltip tutorial system that helps you along the way. The UI is quite intuitive and hands-on, though there are some bits of information that need to be more accessible. And seeing your little humble camp go from a few tents to an established village with trading and a small population to a large, thriving town with multiple industries, hundreds of people, is just an amazing thing. I've loved every moment of learning how to play, how to prioritize certain goods and commodities over others, how to take advantage of imports and exports, and more. This foundational gameplay loop is challenging at first, fun to learn, and really quite rewarding at the end of the day. And then there's Restoring the Peace, which is a lot like this with one massive difference. Bandits, rival armies, and really fun medieval battles. Left unchecked, the rest of the map can start getting filled up with bandit camps that will steal your goods and while rival barons actually do clean them up sometimes, occasionally there will be a band of brigands heading towards your town and you need to defend yourself, which is honestly easier said than done. Getting the right equipment, having enough pop population to actually have an army all hinges on your economic success, so it's all about you strategizing how you're going to grow your settlement, get those shields, swords, armor, spears, and bows to have a genuine chance of meeting the enemy in battle and defending your way of life. That being said, you could also recruit mercenaries, which is quite cool. Different bands of mercenaries are available each month, and while they are incredibly expensive, it's been worth hiring one or two at times just to make sure you have the numbers to fight in a major battle to challenge a territorial claim, etc. All the units look really authentic and immersive. The animations are beautifully done, even if they are only a few at the moment. I just love how the bows pull back, the arrows go in flight. I 
love the troops fighting each other tooth and nail, the flags, the armor, the weaponry. I love that the bodies are persistent in the aftermath of a battle, and you kind of sometimes get this upright flag waving in the wind, sadly, after a defeat. I love it all. Visually, it's just fantastic. And it's also really good mechanically. The AI marches steadily and knows when to charge at you. It retreats to reform the line when it's being overwhelmed. And you will often come up against a larger army than normal, which can prove quite challenging. The formations all work quite well. The units are responsive. Abilities like hold or push forward or brace against missile fire or shield wall are all really effective. And things like morale, fatigue, and overall effectiveness do make a big difference difference in how you fight. So to maximize all of this, you always have to think about unit positioning, think about where your archers are going to have the biggest impact, etc. Yes, cavalry units aren't part of the game just yet. There is a rework happening there for them, but the units that are here in early access are quite fun to play with and give me a lot of hope for future expansions in warfare, especially with sieges. The army side of things also has some really cool, unique customization options, so you can add your own flavor to your retinue. From the face to the armor, helmets, weapons, shape of the shield, an overall color scheme, or even to having multiple retinue soldiers in this unit with different customized looks. And if you have the coin, some will even have upgraded armor, and there are tons more options here, which is just a really nice touch. All of this translates to battles that have just a bit more of your personal investment. You actually start to care a bit more about the soldiers that you've put time into that will be gaining experience as well with each battle that they fight an enemy that they defeat. It doesn't look like you can customize the banners that your units hold, and you can't customize the rest of your units either just yet. But what is present is really engaging and makes the battles that much more immersive. Now, of course, Mana Lords being early access, there are some areas of the game, some small, some large, that are still in a work in progress. The technology tree is mostly here, but you can see there are some locked text still being worked on. There's currently only two policies you can unlock, so even if you grow your settlement to a level three, you don't actually get access to more policies, and the production tab here is completely empty at the moment as well. Over on the campaign map, which for release will be the same map in each playthrough, by the way, you can claim other territories with influence, but not King's Favor. That doesn't exist just yet. And you can engage other lords in diplomacy, including sending unique messages, asking for silver, and declaring war or peace, but that's pretty much it. There's still a lot to do here as well. You can tax your people and enact a tithe to gain a steady stream of influence from the church, but you don't really get special missions just yet. There's not much of a narrative in terms of gameplay. It's all pretty much fundamental and sandbox at the moment, so it seems like there's a lot more to come in this respect as well. The other big feature that is currently missing for me is there is no city building AI. So it's pretty much going to be just you on the map, no other towns or villages in other territories. Yes, there are barons to negotiate with and battles to be fought, but from the get-go you're told their cities and castles are all off map. You fight the occasional army that appears at the edge of some territory to claim an area, but that's essentially it. Having an actual AI presence on the map with a town or two will actually make the gameplay a lot more fun and engaging. Being able to trade with them, raid them, or go on all-out war, all of that opens up so many gameplay opportunities that are just not here yet. And sometimes you do really feel a bit lonely. I'm pretty sure this is an area that will get figured out quickly when AI behavior has been sorted out, and of course, when the game can actually handle the graphical and engine needs of running multiple villages, but at the moment you do really feel that it is missing. Overall, my first impressions of Manor Lords is really positive. The city building core gameplay is really well done with loads of beautiful buildings. I love the construction animations, interesting ways to produce trade commodities, weaponry. I love the visual effects, weather systems, and seasonal changes of the landscape. It's really impressive, and it really is quite fun to build this personalized medieval town with unique plot placements for houses, playing around with sheep and chickens, building 
a thriving economy and engaging with research, development, policies, there's really not much I can fall to this side of the game. There are of course bits of polishing to do, people and animals clipping or running into things, pathfinding for trade carts probably need to be a bit better as well, and I encountered some bugs here and there, but absolutely nothing game breaking which is really great, especially compared to the demo in late 2022. And the military side of things looks and plays well too, even if it feels like a smaller feature at the moment. You can get armies into the hundreds of individual soldiers, you can still recruit new units, source or produce equipment, hire mercenaries, customize retinue officers, and engage in battles that are quite heated and immersive. The pathfinding here could be better, I would like to order units that move between territories to use roads by default for example, otherwise they're going over cliffs which is quite silly, but overall I really like what's been done on this side of the game as well. I can't wait to see how cavalry is going to be like, how larger cities will look and what siege gameplay might look like once there are city walls and gates and big siege equipment like rams and trebuchet. There is so much potential here to expand the scope of medieval warfare, even if it isn't the primary gameplay loop of Manor Lords. It doesn't need to compete with Total War of course, but Slavic Magic is clearly invested in exploring the military aspect of the game more than I think people expect. Now of course this video isn't about reviewing the game or telling you whether you should buy it or not, this is all about my experience so far. I've had access to the early access game and essentially I wanted to give you a, a bit of a, a rundown of what to expect when it comes out in a couple of weeks. I've shown you the gameplay features and mechanics that will be included and that will not and I've given you some first impressions based on my two campaigns so far. I feel really good about a lot of things here and I'm very hopeful for other areas as well, and honestly, I think that Slavic Magic is doing an amazing job of it, and I'm sure the actual release version of the game will have a bit more content, or at least some decent polishing and refining, so there's still much more to come. And that's it for today guys, I'll be posting new videos just like this right up to the launch of the game and beyond, so if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button for more just like this. I really hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative, if you did, give it a like and let me know any thoughts or questions in the comments section below. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.